Fora TV. The world is thinking. Owen Flanagan wrote The Problem of the Soul. And really the question is how to think about biology and science and physics and quarks versus are we something more? There, it seems to me we got two choices. The mind equals the brain, or the mind is more than the brain. I mean, there may be another choice, but I don't know what it is. Less than the brain might apply to a president or something, but, uh, but under normal circumstances, it's equal to or greater than. But I don't know how to think about that, because what science is doing is it's gradually doing what science does, which is reduce big problems into a myriad of small problems, and then a bunch of smaller problems, and you divide down, and you eventually find an answer to something. And then by reverse engineering, you then try and find the entire explanation. So there are people like Ray Kurzweil who says that within 50 years we will be able to reproduce the human mind through artificial intelligence and that the hard problem in philosophy, at least as I understand it, is how the brain creates what we call the mind or consciousness. And there are some people who believe that this will actually happen. On the other hand, there are other people who believe that this isn't possible, that this is a belief on the part of science that they don't share. So we got the people who believe, no, there's a soul, there's something more. There's other people say, no, this is representation. We'll get up to the next level, as John called, and we will find that there's a relationship between the brain and whatever we call the mind. But this does raise the problem of the soul. Either we have one or we don't have one. We have an essence as human beings or we are physical. Um, essence is pure, pure through. The third possibility is we can't tell. So I'm sure you guys have all read William James from uh, 100 years ago. And what's fascinating to me is that William James tried to approach this from the point of view of experience. People experience a feeling of awe and religion and oneness with the universe. And I chose this quote from uh, St. Teresa because she refers to seeing the universe as being with utter clearness, delicate, we cannot understand or grasp it. Well, this feels like a religious experience. Doesn't, and in fact, it is one. It shapes people's lives. Many of the great religious leaders have had similar experiences. But you can do the same thing with a wide variety of drugs and you don't need anything. You don't need any thought, you don't need any religion, you don't need any higher power. You just need somebody standing there with either administering a drug or electrical stimulation, transcranial magnetic stimulation, and these descriptions are identical. So now with science looking down at these little parts of the brain, they create a sense of awe. So if science creates the sense of awe, then we're left in the peculiar position that was the, is the awe more than the science? Is the awe more than the DNA? So William James actually referred to what he called as felt knowledge. It states a feeling uh, that seem to be uh, mystical states, but they're also sensations that feel like knowledge. And perhaps this is the end point of the science-religion controversy because there are things that we believe are true. And we believe them, we prove them, we believe in science, or we believe in religion. But we can't control the feeling that tells us it's true. And I, some of you are familiar with this diagram. Let me say to you that each one of these lines is identical in terms of its length. But I, is there anybody here who feels they're identical? Feels. I mean, we know they're identical because I'm going to tell you they're identical, but it's hard to change the basic biology that tells you they're not identical. So what we're left with now is you can sense two different systems working simultaneously. One which is sort of the logic of science. We can measure this. That's empiricism. And we have the brain's inherent structure which is telling us something different. And we cannot overcome that. Which gets us to the aha. Now, we... Everybody here believe that 2 plus 2 is 4? Okay, how do you prove it? You, by assuming 2 plus 2 is 4 and then proving it. I mean, there is, at some point, there's, you start with some basic assumption that you can't get beneath. 
And yet we really feel that that is true because we, that's how we have structured science. On the other hand, E equals MC squared, you believe and feel that that's true. Probably as a physicist, I, I know it's true because they tell me it's true, but I don't feel it's true. So we have two systems at work, one which creates the feelings of belief, religion, mysticism, awe, wonder, spectacle, and we have another system of logic. The logic is trying to look at the systems that create the awe, but it's the awe that creates the thinking about the awe. And I think that religion eventually is going to get down to a, I don't know if the word is uh, acceptance, acceptance of how our brain is creating this dialogue rather than the dialogue occurring as though it is meaningful.